Hello everyone and welcome to today's video and yes, I'm doing a tier list and basically the heroes that I am going to unlock. I'm trying to find all these th these heroes in this video. I'm going to showcase a bunch of them that you can go for and then I'm going to obviously tell you the ones that I am specifically trying to unlock and then use in my team. So let's go over my tier list for mini heroes of Summoner War sponsored video by ZB Games. Hello, special like, comment, and subscribe for more daily videos for Mini Heroes and for Call of Dragons since my name is Mr. Sneaky, an official Call of Dragons content creator and we are sponsored today for Mini Heroes Summoner's War. And what I'm going to be doing is going over the heroes because there is honestly a bunch of heroes that I have already as you can see, but guess what? The unowned pile is equally as big. And if you go to the handbook, you can actually look at all heroes in the game that you don't own and what you could be unlocking in the future. And this is a really cool one because it allows you as a player to basically click a hero and look, I can look at this hero and look at all of his abilities, what he does and get a good idea of what I actually want in this game. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to look through these legendary heroes. I'm going to recommend some of the best heroes that I've found through the handbook. And we're going to start off with the very first one, which is going to be Emperor Sian. So this is Emperor Zian, yes, he is a massive hero, one of the best in the game. He's one of the best tanks you could possibly ask for in mini heroes. And the reason why is he's got like, he has another massive damage output, right? He's not known for that, but he's one of the best defensive capable tank heroes that you can put in your team. He can absorb massive damage for your team, by doing different crowd control effects for them and basically debuffing the enemy, right? So he's definitely a very powerful hero that you can use. If we look at some of his skills really quickly, his first one is a, a, an attack always on the front and he puts provoke as well as tremble. And if we look at those abilities here, you can see provoke forces the attack on the reset lasting two rounds, meaning that person he attacks has to attack him, which is a really cool little feature there for two rounds. And then tremble is reducing 10 points of energy. SP, which is the energy or your rage meter for your heroes to go up in and activate their ultimate ability during the fight. This obviously can uh, allow them as well to increase the physical damage dealt by 50%. So really, really cool little ability there for Zan Yu. And that's just your basic attack, right? Nothing too crazy here. But his ultimate, this is his ultimate attack. He will heal all allies, which is a really amazing thing in this game because healing, honestly, is very powerful. Allowing all of your units to constantly keep sustaining might win you the game because some teams do play like a very debuff style where they try and debuff you and debuff you and stop you from using SP and you need to out heal that so you can eventually use your moves and actually blast them out of the water, right? So it's a really very powerful thing. You get a uh, humanity shield and one layer of violent rage where you can check these both, which is reducing the damage um, by 30% and increasing the SP by 20 points at uh, beginning of action, which is really good. You can also, when dealing physical damage, increase the real damage, direct de uh, deduct um, HP, ignore the uh, defense and shield effect. So basically this is a true penetration. It's like mitigation, right? This is a very hard force um, attack. So it's really cool. And this increases um, for each stack and it goes up to five layers. So really powerful uh, ultimate that you put on all of your allies as well as healing them. So that's why he's one of the best ones. As you can see, he's even got a rating of 9.5 and he's five stars in review. So highly, highly recommended for a lot of players. If you look at quickly his other skills, he'll attack all enemies and attach uh, provoke and lock, which is really cool. You will also do false name when received physical damage. He increases the probability of being critically hit by 50%, but reduces the received damage, meaning he basically allows him to get crit, crit, you know, but he reduces that massive amount of damage by amount. So it's a really nice little um, double-edged sword almost, but you'd be surprised at how effective that actually works in his kit. 
because when you go and look at fourth skill, when being critically hit, reduce the received damage by 90%. So guess what? It doesn't matter if I'm being critted because it is literally only doing 10% of its damage which is absolutely absurd and this is why he's one of the best tank heroes in the game right you can obviously counter attack the attacker and randomly attach another debuff so Z emperor zian i hope i've said his name right here but an amazing tank hero you can put in to your main lineup so let's go into the next hero in our tier list and he's the next zang Fae. And honestly, Zhang Fei for me is going to be the one that I am going to try to assign and lock as fast as possible. Why? He arguably is the best hero in the game. He's one of the argued best heroes in the game. And some people might argue this against even my last pick, which is a very powerful pick because of the healing and damage that he does, right? But Zhang Fei is... If you want to be more of, let's say, the Chad of all abilities, this is what this guy does. He's the best tank that does the most amount of damage with some sort of crowd control effects. He doesn't do really any healing as much, but he does do a massive amount of damage, which makes him very desirable in a lot of teams. And when you look at all of his um, skills here, we can see again... He's attacking the enemy in front. If it had a lock attached to him, we can now attach Maim. And it, that will then chain to release Intoxicated on his next first action. So if you read this, what it basically says is when we attack, if it has lock on it, we increase the physical damage, which then goes into Maim. And then Maim says you're unable to increase or even receive SP, which is amazing for two rounds. It basically soft locks them from using any sort of ability or generating that rage up for the ability for two rounds. Very crucial ability when it comes to debuffing and controlling your enemy's SP output. So this is why already for the first one, it's a very powerful effect. When we look at this one though, this is why it goes even crazier because this is intoxicated. So this is like the ultimate effect of it where he attacks all ana, um, enemies and if the enemies had luck, they attach main. So this is where if you start combining these two skills, you can ch basically attack the guy, if he already has meme attached to him, instead of doing a normal attack, he will then unleash intoxicated in all enemies and potentially put in another lock target on allowing you to go into maim and continually going off so it's an insane amount of damage that you can actually combo out with this hero with already two skills when we look at the third skill this is where he has some more like self healing right so attack the enemy in front if he had bloody evil absorb all damage and convert it into hp and if we look at iron bastion at the beginning of the action if his hp is less than 50 percent or had provoke clear the provoke and restore hp and attach bloody evil and when we look at bloody evil in this skill here reduce received damage by 25 percent and the attack must be a critical hit lasting for 25 uh, for two rounds shall i say which is a really powerful effect right for a tank then we have our destroyability when attacked if he had bloody evil deal damage to the attacker and attach meme with 10 percent 10 percent probability so as you can see all of his kit is very synergistic it's all about basically taking the hit forcing hits onto you and applying meme and lock onto all of those targets because then if you attack that target Instead of just normal attacking, you will always release Intoxicated, which is a very powerful combo, because then you can use your ultimate, which is Intoxicated, and do it again. So the amount of AoE burst this hero does is absolutely unmatched. So if you're looking for a massive nuker in your team for your um, whole tank lineup, this guy, Zhang Fei, might be the one that you're looking out for. Hello, and the third hero I'm going over is How Twow, I want to say. I'm sorry if I'm butchering any of these names. They're hard for, hard for someone who's English speaking. But 9.3 star rated. He's got four of, uh, nearly four and a half stars out of five. But I'm here to tell you, he's a five star hero. This guy is arguably, if you're looking for a healer, 
He's the hero you want in your team. He's the most capable and flexible hero for healing in the game. Instead of build, um, going for a specific healer which works with a very powerful combo type, Hao Tao allows you to basically work with most combos. That's why I actually rate him very highly. And if you're looking for a healer, this guy is the one. And the reason why is because of his abilities. His abilities are very crazy when we look at them because he can heal loads of allies and even per combat revive one dead ally. So if we go over him, we can see an aesthetic attack the enemy in front and attach um, innovate with 50% probability if the target had innovate after attack release first aid immediately. So innovate is received, increases the damage received by 25%. So it's a really nice effect. So if you are trying to kill the enemy healer, you target that healer, guess what? They take 25% extra damage because of how Tao target them for two rounds. And by doing that, if they are obviously already um, got Innovate on them, you can then use your first aid, which is this skill, which heals the ally with the lowest HP. And if the ally HP exceeds 50%, the SP of um, himself and ally will be increased by 30 points. So basically, if you're above 50% HP and you get the heal, guess what? You're getting some extra SP and you're generating your ultimate even quicker. And we look at the ultimate, it's called the Occult Arts. It heals all allies and randomly revives one dead ally. And the ally with the highest STR, which is strength in this game, will gain one level of Violent Rage. And when you look at Violent Rage, it's a very powerful ability for your basically physical DPS or potentially tank, depending on what you're running, like maybe Zhang Fei, for example. It will allow that hero, when dealing physical damage, increase the real damage, which again is the penetration of that hero against the enemy. It will deduct HP and it will ignore defense and shield effects. The physical attack will be increased by 5% lasting for two rounds and it can be stacked up to five layers. So you can keep getting this stronger and stronger and stronger the longer and longer and longer the battlefield goes. So very powerful already opening three abilities that Hao Tao has. We look at his next one, he has move camp at the end of action. If his own HP is less than 50%, he restores his own HP and gains immortal, which is received a fatal blow, recovers instantly 5% of his HP and gains stun. Meaning, it's pretty simple. If he would die and he's below 50%, he heals, gains this immortal trigger, and then if you would have killed him, he doesn't die. He goes back to 5% HP and he might heal afterwards but he takes one turn off he's stunned for one turn just remember that so then we go to the final skill and it's poultry at the beginning of the action transfer 25 percent of his current hp to the ally with the highest strength and heal the ally at once this is why it's a very powerful healing hero he's going to be healing at the start of combat during combat and potentially even mid combat if you're using his healing ability and his um, obviously ultimate, right? So a very powerful hero here. This is the third one. This is why I recommend honestly Hao Tao for one of the heroes in your lineup and very powerful healer in the game that's flexible with every comp and a must, honestly a must have in my eyes for most comps. So the next hero I'm going to go over is another healer, but it's a different type of healing compared to Hao Tao. And this is Li Bei, I want to call him. Um, Li Bei is a very powerful hero. Again, he's only getting the 8.8 .8 ratings, but don't let that knock him down. He's a very good healer, but in a different way. He is more of a tank based healer where he can obviously tank a lot of damage heal a little bit. But the really powerful thing, which I actually like about him is the effect that he can buff his allies critical rate. So if we look at some of these skills, we have sword, attack the enemy in front, and attach provoke, which is like the tanking ability. If his HP is higher than 50%, the damage will be increased by 50%. Otherwise, you absorb 50% damage and convert it into HP. Basically, if you're above 50% HP, you take more damage, but as soon as you're below 50%, you start absorbing all the damage instead, which is a really cool, weird way of working. But when you look at all of his other abilities, it will make a bit more sense. Righteous is restore HP and of all allies and gain loyalty. And loyalty increases the critical rate 
by 20%. And that's what's very powerful. Crit will allow you to get some absolute absurd numbers. And if you time it on the right skills on your team comp, guess what? You could blow your opponents out of the water, right? So now we're going to the third skill, Sawn Brothers. When the remaining HP does not exceed 50%, Share the HP of both sides equally with the ally with the highest HP and restore the HP additionally. Otherwise, share the HP of both sides equally with the ally with the lowest HP and restore the HP additionally. Basically, it says him with his any allies to his left and right, if they're below or a certain threshold, he gets to heal them. And if they're not, guess what? The buff get like he takes the damage. It's like a very weird mechanic, but it's a way for him to allow him to heal his actual um, adjacent allies, basically in Swan Brother. So this is where we're saying as a tank, he's tanking a um, capabilities is very powerful, but he's healing as well is really good because again, again, you've got two skills here already that are based on healing. Then we get to the next one. Entering the battlefield, all of Shu's allies will gain loyalty and increase critical damage, lasting for three rounds. So again, we've already got that critical rate um, crit rate on our ultimate. Here we gain it at the beginning of the battlefield too. This was a really powerful thing. And we gain, as you see, a 20 plus 2% bonus, which will go up um, over time, critical damage. So if you want to hit harder, this is the guy you're going to want in your team. And then we go to the final one, great help. When attacked, reduce the received damage if Lupu didn't have loyalty at this time. He will gain one point of righteousness and when righteousness reached three points, consume all to clear the debuffs and release State of Shoes Force, which is a really cool thing. So it's like, if once you've got this, you've got three stacks of this, guess what? It's gonna detonate and you will hit um, the state of shots choose for so it's a really cool combination this skill it's using two of his other skills to work together to make it even more tanky than he is and that's why when you get all of his skills from like he's an absolute monster tank healer that you can put in your in your comp and that's already four heroes i've gone over two different choices so far on different types of scenarios so let's go into a bit more damage oriented i'm going to pick some more heroes for you guys what I think are the better heroes for the damage role that you can be playing in your team um, compositions. So if we're looking for damage right now, you can't talk about damage without mentioning the name Seema Yi. Seema Yi honestly is, if not the best ranged DPS in the game. She is absolutely absurd. She has also tanking capabilities, which is not obviously the best but her skill the you know the skills themselves are useful to her kit which allows her to actually excel right but her skills are designed to maximize damage output and support her team so it's a very powerful combination when you have a damage dealer that can also support and if you've noticed all the best heroes in the game tend to do two roles but don't generally do one main role which is you know only damage or only tanking or only healing we generally do some sort of dps or we sort of like heal and buff or a tank and heal of a tank and buff like they do different stuff as you can see like so you need to make sure you're picking heroes that are very versatile and doing multiple jobs and when we look at Simi Yi's abilities here she obviously attacks the first enemy then she attaches curse with a fifth 50% probability, which will allow her to basically deal 50% more magical damage as well as potentially a team. If a team is magical based, they will also do 50% more magical damage to that target for two rounds. You go to the next one though, Wolf Appearance. This is the one that I really like. It attacks all enemies, attaches the curses again with a 50% probability. If the enemy had a curse on them though, attach Enervate and Enervate again increases the received damage by 25%. So if they're already taking 50% magical damage, you will then attach another debuff making all their damage taken received increase by 25%. So you amplify that even crazier. So it's a very nasty debuff and imagine that with your team, you are going to be pumping out some really massive numbers with all these um, basically utility debuffs that you are putting on your opponents. 
So now we go into the next one, which is the third skill, dispel his own debuffs and immediately gain 40 points of SP. If his SP reached 100 at this time, his attack damage will be permanently increased, which is a really cool thing and it just shows you there an increased attack damage buff. Nice, simple buff there. We look at Tolerant, when attacked for an enemy that had enemy on them, um, reduce the received damage by one layer. If the SP of the attack is higher than Sima Yi's, um, then he will receive, basically steal 10 points of their SP and gain it for himself. So really crazy ability again that you're able to put onto him, making them basically take more damage, stealing their rage, and then tanking up yourself. Really cool little uh, damage dealer. And then finally, at the beginning of the action, if his SP, so again, if his energy is lower, then 50, you gain 10 SP and you increase your attack damage again for two rounds. So you can see here, he's buffing himself so hard. He's healing his allies and he's just doing so much work for the team. So when he is hitting those targets, the curses and all the amplified damage adds up and makes him one of the coolest and best ranged damage dealers that you can put in your team. So let's go over another damage dealer that you could consider putting in your team in this tier list. So the next damage dealer that I'm gonna talk about is Mr. Huang Zong. And this guy, honestly, if you're playing the very first time that we were talking about Mr. Zhang Fei, he is going to be a great addition in that type of team comp because he is another sort of tank based hero, but he's an archer, which is a very cool effect. And he deals almost as much damage as your Zhang Fei. So it's a really cool combo. If you want Zhang Fei and Huang Zhang, you can do that really cool little thing. So let's go over him and just showcase why he does a load of damage. He attacks his enemy in front and attaches a break shield, which ignores all shielding effects. So you always hit them directly, which is very powerful. If the enemy HP is lower than himself, you increase the critical rate by 20%. So again, if you're say like at 4K HP and they're at 6K, guess what? You're doing 20% potential more crit rate by them because you're getting 20% crit rate on them. So a really powerful effect. And this is just again, when dealing attack, increase crit rate. It just shows you a nice little basic skill on that. And that's just his basic attacks. So every time he attacks, that's what's gonna be triggering, right? But now let's go into his actual damage where it's kind of scary when we look into some of many heroes as a big damage abilities. Attack all enemies and attach break shield again to them. And if they broke the shield successfully, the damage will be increased by 50%. So if you hit all the enemies and their shields were broken during that time, and you apply break shield during this as well, guess what? You have the chance to then deal 50% more damage on top. So that is just insane. You can imagine a 50% damage uh, increase for your team is no joke. And that's why you have, as you can see, different heroes in this game that allow you to reduce damage, increase damage, and like do different types of utilities for both teams. So that's why it's important to really pay attention to what your team comp wants to do. His third skill is Flame Arrow. Attack the enemy with the lowest HP and attach another Break Shield. And if they have, you can do a Lock. And if they already have Lock, they can then put Mame on, which again increases critical rate. So you can see a lot of these heroes, if they work together, you know, certain heroes that already apply Lock and Mame, this guy is gonna go even more crazy because they're already having certain things attached to him and making his other skills basically benefit even better, right? So Flame Arrow is a really powerful effect. You know, we can just see it increase the physical damage, um, maim, stop them from gaining SP, and then obviously the crit rate damage that we've just seen, which is throughout his kit so far. Then we have at the beginning of action, the critical hit rate will be permanently increased by 5% when dealing a critical hit. The attack damage and attach innovate. So again, very powerful ability. You can always, always guarantee after so many turns, you're almost hitting that 60, 50, almost going up to 75, 100% crit rate the longer the battle goes. So you're always gonna be hitting massive numbers with Zong, um, Huang Zong. So then let's go to his final one, which I really like. I really like precision. When releasing shoot, if there's no enemy on the opposite side, you release flame arrow instead and increase the damage. How powerful is that? So like, 
you can redo this if your shoot doesn't have a target. So if you shoot and there's no one there, guess what? You're going to be able to just trigger Flame Arrow, which is just crazy passive. So you can imagine all of these passives working together. Your single target DPS is great. You can see he's got 8.5 rating already on the reviews. 205 reviews too. So a very good hero. Honestly, you can see at the top as well, the little wheel. So I highly recommend him. If you're running Zhang Fei, um, Zhang Fei as well, smash him. Pump, pump, them, pump them together. Really, really powerful combo. So the final DPS hero I want to showcase is Mr. Love Boo or Lu Boo. I'm guessing he's going to be called in other games, but it's called Love Boo in this LV Boo. Uh, but honestly, he is one of the best attacking heroes in the entire game. He has, as you can see, I've not really mentioned this on other heroes because it's a bit of an in-depth thing. But for this hero, it's a very powerful thing. If you look at his stats, he has 200 strength. And 200 strength allows him to just basically powerhouse through with his skills, which are strength-based skills, right? He has very powerful skills. He can maximize his own attack ability and the ability to deal damage in fights with his reap ability is just absolutely crazy when it goes to kill bloodless enemies. So let's go and showcase this with his actual skills, right? Because when you look at suppress, suppress is attacking the enemy in front, you steal 10 points of SP, which is crazy. If the target has chaos, directly attach tremble and gain one layer of violent rage. So we can look at these effects, chaos at the end of action, attach stun with 50% chance probability. So basically, what are these skills which you will see? can attach chaos if they have that chaos on him 50 percent chance to be stunned for two rounds every, each round right so really powerful effect and if they have got that then you're going to get violent rage which is increasing his own damage as you guys know and you've seen tremble already so very powerful attack this is just him attacking you guys right now we go to peerless attack five enemies randomly and attach tremble with 50 percent chance if the target had tremble attach chaos this cannot be dodged you cannot dodge this. This will be something you have to take, which is crazy in my eyes in in regards. Because again, five enemies could be hit. All five could get chaos applied to them, meaning all of them could be stunned randomly on their next turn. And that could begin, happen again on their next turn. So two turns of 50% chance flipping a coin that you get stunned or not. Very powerful effect for an, a, a DPS hero for like a utility, you know, CC lock um, ability they bring to your team. And then throw Halberd. Attack the enemy with the lowest HP. Attach break shield, which is really good. And you gain back 20 points of SP. You then get standing proud at the beginning of an action. If his own HP is less than 50%, gain one layer of violent rage, which we're already gaining, as you see from the first skill. So we're gonna gain that violent rage very, very quick. You can then consume two layers of Violent Rage if you hit the maximum of five to immediately gain 50 points of your um, special points, basically your energy, which is a very cool effect for your hero. And then finally, Supernatural, when dealt a fatal blow, gain three layers of Violent Rage, release throw Halberd immediately and absorb HP. It can only tr be triggered once per round so a really good effect again it makes him a little bit more sustainable in the fight so you can see here for another dps hero why he should be potentially in your team if you haven't got him already he's a very good capable hero doing a lot of aoe stun locking and basically um damage amplification on himself right so really good little hero for you guys to potentially unlock and we're going to do one more hero the final hero that i'm going to give and it's a very powerful hero for you guys and they're going to be a support style hero in my eyes but the reason why i'm talking about him is because they're really easy to actually obtain um in the game and here she is dio chan and the funny thing is i actually love dio chan in Rise of Kingdoms, I actually unlocked her on my main account when that um, whole event was live for um, the game. But in Min Heroes, Dio Chan is an SSR hero, a legendary one that you can obtain. And she's honestly one of the best 
support heroes in the game. Her initial stats are really good again. As you can see, 100, 200, and 100. That 200 intelligence makes her skills for her supportive role excel, right? So she has the best basically our highest support ability of all the other heroes so if you really want a support hero go for Diochan and that's a really good one because again you could unlock a Diochan really early on by completing your very first when you log in the game just complete the seven day challenge and you will unlock your Diochan like currently it's the 14 day challenge which gets how Wow, so a really cool little effect here, but Dio Chan, really good hero. And the reason why is when we look at some of her abilities. Dan Seals attacks the enemy in front, attaches Tremble, and the 50% probability if the target is a tank, you steal 10 points of your their SP. So really cool effect again with the tremble reducing obviously 10 um, SP at the end and receiving physical damage dealt by 50% to that target for two rounds. This is again a really powerful debuff effect that you are just naturally doing. This is your normal attack in the game. Then we go to Sawing Discord. This is her basically a massive um, support move. She attacks all the enemies and attaches Tremble. With 50% probability, if the target had Tremble, you attach Chaos, which I love. I love this. And, and honestly, it's a powerful ability. So if they've already got that, you know, attack on them from hitting on your um, dancing, guess what? They're going to get potentially attached Chaos and then get that stun lock on them for two rounds, which is a 50% chance to get stunned again. Really good little support hero here. Then we go to Rare Beauty. Attack all enemies who had Tremble and attach Chaos to the enemies with the highest strength if there is no suitable target, release Sewing Discord instead. So basically, if you're against a magic-based team and all, if all the heroes have the same based strength at like 100 you will then go to the next here um, you will then go to the next best thing and just trigger sorry discord again which is your ultimate ability which is a really cool little support effect uh, which is relevant in certain matchups i haven't unlocked the next two skills but we are working towards them as you can see but we've got gorgeous beauty when re uh, received a physical attack reduce 50 percent of the damage and start this part of the damage and when you look at store up to is 300% magic attack bonus which is really cool so you just kind of store it and then pop and pump it out later on shy moon at the beginning of your action if her damage storage reached the upper limit you give that to the ally with the highest strength so that ally's next attack will add the same amount of damage gain and gain one violent rage restores the hp as well of that ally so what this means is with these two last skills is every time you basically take damage 50 percent of it will be put in like a bank and once that bank fills up you give that bank to your best hero with the best strength that hits the hardest and guess what it puts that bank on his damage so he hits even harder and it gives him a violent rage so he can potentially get even harder on that next attack. So a very cool support hero, Diochan here. And again, if you want to look at all the heroes, you can check out all of them. And maybe, you know, you want to not go with any of these heroes that I've discussed today. There is loads of different heroes that have different abilities and might want to, you know, consider for your team for the type of play style you want in main heroes and you can just go in the handbook check all of these guys out and again go to the hero section and you can check all of these guys out through here as well so i hope you've enjoyed today's video that is mini heroes summoners war my tier list for all of the heroes that I'm going to cover today, we've gone over six of the heroes that you can be picking from. And then obviously with those, you should be able to make a nice little team and obviously go and work for, you know, maybe you've got some legendary heroes already and you can just incorporate those with some of these amazing legendary heroes and your team should get a lot stronger, right? So I hope you've enjoyed it. Smash like, comment and subscribe for more mini heroes content. And below is the little gift codes and if you're looking for another gift code again, there will be on this side just a nice little pop-up of another gift code for you guys during this month. So check it out, use it, get those freebies. And with all that said, and we've done today's video, stay safe, stay sneaky, and peace out till the next one.